I'm Kathleen Moss and I'm here today to tell you why you need to start making your own deodorant. I'm not usually that pushy about things, but I have a lot of good reasons and I've just recently started to make my own deodorant and as I've started to make my own, I've learned even more good reasons to do it. So today I have five reasons why you should switch and make your own deodorant. First reason is the most obvious. It's so much cheaper than buying and looking for the most um, non-toxic deodorant sticks or roll-ons out there. And there are very few non-toxic ones. This one is usually around nine or $10 in health food stores. It's called Schmidt's. And it's based in arrowroot flour or starch, um, baking soda, and coconut oil in that order. And it's a great product. It works really well. I've used it for about 10 years now. And it's just a little expensive, and it's worth it. But there are some other reasons to switch. That's probably one of the main ones for most people. It's just a little bit expensive to get the good stuff in the stores. The second reason to switch is when you make your own deodorant, you can control what's in it. And one of the things I like to control is the amount of whiteness that ends up on my clothing. Uh, with this product, a lot of times I will end up with white underarms in my shirts and they won't wash out the first round. So I have to put soap on them and put them back in the laundry if I used a lot of deodorant that day. And uh, when I make my own deodorant, and this is what I recently made of my own deodorant, I kind of switch the order of the ingredients. I do coconut oil first, and then arrowroot, and then baking soda. So you can play with the arrowroot and baking soda, but arrowroot is usually something that is, tends to absorb moisture, so that's the antiperspirant side of things. And then the baking soda is going to um, cut down on the odor of your detoxing armpits. So um, you need both of them, but I like to have both of them a little bit lower in content than coconut oil. The reason a stick like this can't have co coconut oil as its main ingredient is that it would melt and it would get all over everything. But if you're using a glass jar or a metal tin, you don't have to worry it can melt and that's just fine. Um, it might melt in, in the summertime actually. So, and it's not a big deal if it does. You just wanna make sure it's well mixed when it's in liquid form. But I like the oil base because I like it to not leave as much white residue on my clothing. And an oil base, you can really rub it in well and I feel like it works a little bit better. The reason I never wanted to have this kind of deodorant in my bathroom before is because I thought that the act of rubbing it in, so taking it out of the container, softening it up in your hands, and then rubbing it into your armpit just seems awkward and messy and greasy. Um, and it takes some getting used to for sure. It's not, it doesn't feel natural at first. But actually it is very natural. And um, it's something that I, I feel is very therapeutic, especially for those of us who need to detox our lymph glands in our armpits. So that's most of us. <laughs> our breaths tend to be accumulators of toxins and xenoestrogens especially. And so they're kind of like sponges and they collect a lot of toxins throughout the years. And if the lymph glands aren't stimulated in our armpits, um, then the lymph glands can't get rid of all of those xenoestrogens. So. It's really good if you can massage your armpits periodically, and you kind of need oil to do that, and so an oil-based deodorant is the perfect excuse, and it really gets the deodorant in there, and it absorbs better, and it doesn't end up on your clothes either. So I've gotten used to it, and I kind of like it now. But the fourth reason, and maybe the most important reason of all, is that store-bought de deodorants don't have some of the more precious ingredients that you can put in your own homemade deodorant. And I'm talking about essential oils now. So the most precious essential oil probably of all time is frankincense. And the second one probably is sandalwood. And those are both very expensive. For an ounce, they're almost $100 in many cases. 
Um, so a lot of people don't buy them because they're really expensive. And certainly these companies don't put very much of them in their products, if any, because they're expensive for them too. But I have found that having a few drops of those essential oils not only makes this product more effective, it's better at deodorizing my armpits or underarms, um, but it also helps with lymph elimination and lymph stimulation. So there are certain herbs and oils that help with lymph stimulation and sandalwood happens to be one of them and frankincense does too. The other oils I put in are orange and grapefruit oils. Um, those have been reputed to, in studies that are pretty reliable studies, to uh, help with the elimination of cancerous cells in the breast particularly. So I'm not going to claim that they will do that for you because that would be something that would get me in trouble with the FDA. But uh, you might look up that research, look up research on terpenes and breast cancer. And I'll definitely put some links in the show notes below. I will also link to my favorite essential oil company. Uh, one of the reasons I really like it, it's local and I trust them a lot. I've gotten to know them over the years. But I also really like them because they sell very, very small quantities of those precious essential oils that are so expensive. So you can get um, a milliliter or two, and it's just a tiny little vial, and maybe it costs $15 or $20 instead of a half of an ounce, which costs $60 or $90. So that is enough. Those little tiny vials, the smallest ones, are enough to make a big pot like this that'll last you a year or two. And coconut oil doesn't go rancid, so this really will last you a year or two. So I will link to all my favorite essential oils down below. They'll be kind of long links, but I'll do all that down below so that you can go shopping at Mountain Rose Herbs if you like. And I will also try to find a link to this Schmitz deodorant because I think it is available shipping-wise all over at least the U.S. and probably Canada too. So I'll try to find a link for that for those of you who aren't willing to jump all the way into the most ultra-healthy and... Um, and nurturing and, and toxin-free um, product made in your own kitchen, but want to start out with this really good toxin-free product made by someone else. Um, I should have said there were six reasons why you should do this, because uh, the other reason I didn't think about until now is that this plastic, it's a lot of plastic, and every time you use up one of these, which doesn't actually have a whole lot of product in it, it's just, you know, about that much of of the whole thing that has a solid deodorant product in it. You have to throw the whole thing away. There's no way to recycle it. So, But my original fifth point was the other reason that you should switch to natural homemade deodorant is you'll be setting a great example for the other young women in your life, whether it be your daughter, your niece, your granddaughter. Um, switching over and caring for yourself more is always such a good idea when we have young people around us. and. It really sets new patterns in place and can set new trends in place too. So that's one of the reasons I try to do the best I can is so that my daughter will follow in my footsteps. And I will leave a recipe in the show notes. This is a super simple product to make. It's only got those three ingredients plus a few drops of essential oils. Um, if you're you know, precancerous like I am, you might put extra orange oil in. Orange oil is really affordable. So that wouldn't be very much cost at all. I do en encourage you to use at least sandalwood because sandalwood is an ingredient that really will help with odor. And that's one of the problems with natural deodorants is that they don't always help fully with odor. Sandalwood is kind of a magic herb and it does really help with odor. So I encourage you not to leave that part out. But really all you need to do, and if you wanna just try this product for a little while and not make a huge pot of it like this, you can just put a tablespoon of coconut oil in a metal or a glass measuring cup, um, put it on a warm stove that's been turned off but still warm from boiling some tea, maybe something like that, and come back in 10 or 15 minutes when it's been melted and just add like a teaspoon each of both the baking soda and the arrowroot starch and um, maybe three or four drops of essential oil. And you don't need to use sandalwood right away if you don't wanna make the investment until you know 
that you like the consistency and the application of this product. But at least put some orange oil in or something that you have that may be frankincense if you have some of that already. And try it out for a week and see if you can get used to the awkwardness of getting your hands kind of goopy and massaging your armpits. Um, you always want to massage in an upward motion, by the way, when you're massaging your underarms um, and putting this on. It helps the lymph glands if you don't go downward, but you go upward. And try it out, and then if you do like it, you can always melt that product down and add more of the coconut oil and the arrowroot and the baking soda and even more drops of essential oils and make a bigger pot of it and then this will last you a really long time. So those are my five or six reasons why I think you should switch to making your own deodorant. I think they're all really good reasons and I feel silly for not realizing all of them before myself but since I have just recently been able to make this switch I wanted to share why I do it with others and a recipe as well. It's super, super easy. It doesn't take much time at all. Uh, the only secret in the recipe is that you want to keep stirring it for about 20 minutes while it gets cool and more solid so that it doesn't uh, cool in a way that separates all of the constituents. But just stir it every couple of minutes and it'll be fine. So that's it for today, and I really hope to do more of these skincare and natural beauty tips. Um, kind of stocking your bathroom with detox ingredients instead of toxins. So be sure to subscribe if you're interested in that because I'll be having more and more of those kinds of videos in the next weeks and months. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.